Bigfoot and Littlefoot, chapters 14 through 16, written by Ellen Potter. Chapter 14 of the book called Bigfoot and Littlefoot, art um, story by Ellen Potter, art by Feliz, Felicita Sala. Chapter 14, The Last Letter. After school, Hugo didn't even, didn't even stop at everything you need general store and bakery. Said he ran straight home. He flung open his bedroom door and immediately did a whoop of joy. Bobbing on the stream, caught in a tangle of soggy leaves, was his little boat. He opened the jar inside the boat and shook out the note. This is what it said. Dear Hugo, I thought you were my friend, but I was wrong. Friends don't make fun of each other. I'm not dumb. I know you're not Bigfoot. Bigfoot doesn't write letters to people. Boon. This is the last time I will write to you. Hugo felt sick to his stomach. He slumped out, down on his bed and read the note again. Not only had he lost his friend, but now Boone thought he was a liar. The big wide world had never felt so far away. Chapter 15, Frog Moon Festival. The Frog Moon Festival begins at the time of day called Dimmery, which is just after supper when people like you and me begin to wonder if there is something good on TV. First, Miss Winterbottom went outside the cave to do some sneaking. This was to make sure no humans were around and there weren't. <laughs> After that came thwacking of the log. Mr. Villab Villabaloo, who was one of the tallest and strongest Sasquatches in Wild, wild um, Windershins Cave, found a big log. He lifted it up with mighty effort, then thwacked the log against the trunk of a great oak tree. Boom! It made a noise like a clap of thunder. He thwacked the tree again. Boom! And again. Boom! The sound of thunder rolled through the north woods. Humans who lived nearby heard it and said to their families, Sounds like there's a really a real gully thwomper of a storm is heading our way. Then they quickly shut all their windows, made sure the cat was inside, and tucked themselves in for a cozy evening at home. After the thacking of the log, all the Sasquatches piled out of wind Wittershin's cavern and the festivities began. There were relay races and log throwing competitions and a somersault area. Sasquatches are terrible at somersaults, but they love to do them. They just do. All sorts of delicious food was laid out on a long table. Sweet walnut rumples and huckleberry trifles and rosehip crunchers and so many pies. Blueberry and gooseberry and golden cloudberry pie and buffalo berry pie, all made from last summer's berries that had been canned especially for the Frog Moon Festival. And at either end of the table were jugs of sweetened pine needle tea. Some of the squidges wore their masks and some didn't, but they were all laughing and screeching and running and having a great time, all except Hugo. He sat on an old tree stump with his chin in his hand, feeling rotten about what happened with Boone. Suddenly a monster ran up to him and stuck his face into Hugo's. Grrr, rah, the monster said. Hi, Malcolm, Hugo said glumly. How'd you know it was me? Malcolm asked from behind his mask. You have acorn butter stuck to your chest hair. Oh, he turned to lunge at a small squidge named Pandora. Grrr, he growled ferocious, very ferociously. Pandora began shrieking. It's just Malcolm, Hugo told Port Pandora. But Pandora kept shrieking. Tell her it's just you, Malcolm, Hugo said. Don't boss me, Captain Flapdoodle, Malcolm replied. Captain Flapdoodle, asked Hugo, squinching up his face. What does that even mean? Pandora's screeching grew, grew so loud that Hugo finally stood up and whipped the mask right off of Malcolm's head. Hey, what did you do that for, Malcolm said angrily. She needs to see that it's you under there or she, or she won't believe it, Hugo told Malcolm. Then two good things happened. Pandora stopped shrieking. Number two, Hugo had an idea. Chapter 16, Ripple Worm River. There was so much going on at the Frog Tree Moon Festival that no one noticed one little Sasquatch wandering off by himself. Hugo had decided that Boone needed to see him in order to believe that he really was really a Sasquatch, just like Pandora had needed to see that Malcolm, excuse me, had needed to see Malcolm to believe that he wasn't a monster. 
Hugo snuck past the hemlock trees and down a hill. He walked until the trees turned into a meadow, and at the end of the meadow was Ripple Worm River. Hugo gasped when he saw it. It was a beautiful tumbling river, all twisty and turnish, and somewhere along the banks of the river, in a little blue house with a red roof, lived Boone. Hugo began walking along the river bank. Before each bend in the river, he told himself that the little blue house was certainly just beyond it. And when he turned the bend, there was only one, only more river and no blue house. Hugo walked until his feet grew achy. Finally, he had to sit down on the bank to rest his tired legs. Maybe Boone lived very far down river. Ooh, isn't that beautiful? Hugo considered, too far for a little Sasquatch to walk in one day. But what, when will I ever have another chance to find him, thought Hugo. That brought him to his feet again. But the next bend in the river came, and there was still no sign of Boone's house. Then Hugo stubbed his toe painfully on a fat log that had been hiding, hidden by tall grass. Ow, he cried, hopping around on one foot. Stupid log! And he picked it up and heaved it right into the river. He watched as it hit the water with a great splash. The log then bobbed very matter-of-factly as if it had meant to spend some time in the river and was glad that someone had finally flung it in. It drifted downriver in such a slow, easy way that Hugo was struck with another idea. Hmm, what could that be? He rushed alongside the bank until he caught up with the log. He hesitated, looking nervously at the wide river that never stopped moving. But then he thought about Boone and he knew he had to act quickly. With a great leap, he jumped off the bank. Sasquatches can leap like mountain goats when they want to. And he plunged into the river. He landed right beside the log, which was exactly where he, where he was aiming to land since Hugo couldn't swim. He wrapped his arm around the log and off he floated down Ripple Worm River, the whole time keeping a lookout for the blue house with the red roof. There he is in the log. And I'm going to stop there at chapter 17.